All right. So today we're going to talk about Andrew Tate and we have Mr. OP, one of Andrew Tate's most loyal supporters here. And we are going to break down the top five Andrew Tate <laughs> moments. Uh, <this> is fuck you. <laughs> now that's OP. <laughs> Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Let's get into the action. I wake up every day excited. I'll go do this today. I'll go do this today. I'll go do this today. And I very much live my life in a frame of not a, I have to do this. It's very much a I get to do this. There's another thing that a lot of people make a mistake with when I talk to them. Like, ah, oh, I have to go to work today. Change your language. I get to go to work today. Imagine you had no job. Be worse, right? Because otherwise you wouldn't be working. So you get to go to work. Oh, I have to fix the car. At least you have a car. You get to fix your car. Most people don't got one. Oh, I have to go get the kids. You get to go get the kids because you have these beautiful children who love you. You understand? People's even their own language is wrong. See what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm saying I'm not sitting here trying to fucking, nah. and, and, you know, uh, you Paul Jock this nigga, but I'm saying that this nigga's like spitting real fast, but he's positivity. Change your mindset. Now, what do you think about this big black? What do you think about this big black? I love my kids, but but I don't always want to go pick them up from school. Like, I mean, there's two, there's two, and parents, that comes that comes but... from perspective from a nigga who has kids versus one who doesn't. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, see, I I see that as the way that you should be seeing it because I don't have no kids. But <laughs> if I had kids, I feel like that's the mindset I should have. And that's that's fair. That's fair. It's just I I do have my moments where I like enjoy being with my kids, but it's not twenty four seven. That's unrealistic. It's and the then, little things that we ask for in our thirties. Yeah, and then forties. <laughs> <40s. laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, what? The funny yeah. thing is, I, I may be the I may be the nigga that's represented for the forties, but I mean, y'all niggas are like y'all already in the forties yourself, fucking hard. So I'm like. <laughs> I mean, most niggas, you know, I come across, they think I'm in my 20s. So, you know. You know. All I, these I, kids, I, 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 don't, I don't even play with niggas like that. I got all these kids, I'm about 45. I mean, I, 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 don't I, get credit, I credit that with the lack of uh, kids and, you know, serious relationships. No, I, no I, gray I hairs. some gray hairs going on <laughs> down here. I had one relationship and I got two gray hairs out of it. He was like, I'm good on this. I need to reverse this. Mm -mm. Hard on hoes for the rest I, of my I, life. I, un I understand. I understand why, why uh, the age aging happens. You know what I'm saying? I get it. I get it. <laughs> Let's talk about the next Andrew Tate clip and his take on women. But well, one of his take, one of his many takes on women. Slap, slap, grab, choke, shut up, bitch, sex. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, Mr. Okay. OP. All right. 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 Here's the thing. We want to talk about gender equality, right? So, here's one thing that I've always been a big fan of is gender equality because I've been waiting on this since I, I was in high school. Um, I believe that if we're going to have a gender equality, we have to have real gender equality. It means if a female steps to a man in a certain type of way, slap, then slap grab, choke. Shut up, bitch. Sex. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh -huh, yeah. So you know what I'm saying? Like uh -huh. it, it, it works out that way. That I mean, we have this. We're we're pushing towards this whole gender equality, but we haven't actually achieved it yet. See, like right now, see him saying that shit. It comes off as chauvinistic and and very mean. But just, just a little bit. Nah, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Bitch. But. I mean, if if we had true gender equality, then you'd be like, oh, yeah, it's, it's whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because there are women who like to be handled that way. I slap, mean, slap, grab, choke, shut up, bitch, sex. It's true. Yeah. And, and here's it's the thing. Nothing at all. It's, it's whatever. Like, it's whatever. And, and it's like, it, people don't want to have the real conversation and act like this ain't real. Okay? I can't tell you how many times I've had to, you know, I didn't have to, but it was requested of me to do these things. And it was like, hey, this is what they wanted. You know, I'm fulfilling what they wanted. 
That's yeah, as a black man, I'm terrified. I feel like you know, oh, I'm, oh yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, this is jail. This equals yeah. I'm going to jail. Like I'm not not. I, I need the consent form signed. Uh, let me get a tape recorded that this is consensual. <laughs> yep. And let me film the room that there is nobody around. She's not being coerced and forced into this. <laughs> like yeah, all that would have to be required. Yeah, man. And see, for for the individuals such as yourself, you guys would have to take those precautions. For a renegade like me. Uh, I have nothing to lose. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have no kids. I have no legacy. So, twenty five. I, 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 I can go hey, ahead. I, I can go ahead and bite that bullet for y'all. I can, I can bite that bullet for y'all. I feel you. I feel you. All right. So here's another hot take from Mr. Andrew Tate. Everyone says what I say is crazy. All I say is that love is real. Men and women should be in love. A man can be completely in love with a woman and care about her and still sometimes fuck something else. The higher your status, the more you can get away with because that girl's so afraid to lose that so you can do whatever you want. But it's the same with anything. Like buy a McLaren, it's not going to work for half the year. Women are also addicted to drama. This is something else you have to understand about females. That's very true. <laughs> females are That's addicted to drama. They are entertained no. by <laughs> drama. What, what does a woman do in her spare time? She watches the Kardashians drama. I don't want to insult anyone. I was about to say a bitch. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. A bitch will sit there and think, I need to relax. Let me watch a, a murder documentary about a serial killer who chops <laughs> people's heads off so I can have a nice good night's sleep in bed. They're addicted to this shit. They love drama. <laughs> so to some degree, even as a man, this is actually an important frame for men to understand. To some degree as a man, you have to instill drama in the relationship because if you don't, she's going to get bored. No, that's very true, man. And she's either going to leave or she will instill the drama. All Thanks. right. So, Mr. Hey, Oki, what do you think about that? Hundred percent facts. I'm. I mean, there are times when I have I have to create drama just to keep her interested because she's going to start some shit with me, or then I just leave. But either way, he's one hundred percent correct on this. Uh, every female that I mess with, again in their spare time, that's what they do. They watch murder docs. They watch the Kardashians, and it's nothing but dumb, drama filled bullshit. What kind of drama do you kick up in a relationship? <laughs> oh, they just, just wondering. I, mean, you know, I, I, I might need to throw something I, in my bag of tricks. It's, you know? it's, it's wordplay. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll say that, you know, oh, hey, I, I heard that so-and-so said that you was uh, doing this. And then she's like, oh, I didn't do that. And I'm like, oh, that's your homie. Your homie said that shit, though. And Let me funny. check your phone now. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I don't check the phones. I don't check the phones. I don't check the phones, man. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it helps when, like, you... You live in a city where a bunch of people are infatuated with you, so she can't really escape, you know, my charm. You know what I'm saying? So Good that helps. Trust, drama and escape. Okay. Yeah. Big Black, what do you think about instilling drama? You know, have you kicked up some drama in your relationship recently? Just you know, just cause? Nope. I have no reason to. Like I'm, I'm fucking happy. Now, if we throw Man, get him my... off the podcast, bro. <laughs> we, we throw what do you mean my... you're happy? You don't want to <laughs> go slap, grab, choke, shut up, bitch, sex. Like, no, no, hold on, enough. hold on. That, that applies in special circumstances, all right? <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> so since we talked a little bit earlier about co-op, let's talk about player versus player. I think that they come up with bullshit like work-life balance, and, well, there's no point working if you don't enjoy yourself and all this other fucking shit. And they remain lazy. And the problem is, is that the world we live in is player versus player. If you go play Call of Duty, right? It's PvP. You want to live, you got to kill that guy. Yep. He's some fucking 14-year-old in Singapore. He might commit suicide if he loses one more game. Don't care. Sniped. Boom. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Had a nice life, <laughs> Tangent. <laughs> You're gone. That's how it works. <laughs> Player, ver <laughs> player versus player. This is the most knowledge I've ever heard being dropped on this podcast. <laughs> All right, Big Black. Do you think life is player versus player? I, I, I want to point this out real quick. It kind of sounds like he he's creating some drama himself. <laughs> like, like you think like, so? He, it's it's clearly got him enough uh, enough enough notoriety and millions of dollars. In this, you know, podcast, but he, he kind of he talks a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, yeah, okay, all right. Let, let me, all right let's, let's get let me Mr. OP, the number one fan here, to, to break it. All, all right, all right. Let, let, let's think about the WWE, right? 
All right, you think about speaking of the WWE, uh, Vince McMahon just resigned and stepped down as the yeah. CEO for sexual assault allegations. Carry on. <laughs> I mean, that was bound to happen, but we're yep. talking about uh, other individuals that's in the WWE. Uh, Triple H, Triple H was one of those individuals that people couldn't stand. You couldn't stand him, he talked a lot of shit, but one of the things about him was he was a cerebral assassin in the ring. He fulfilled the things that he talked shit about. That's what Andrew Tate does. He feels, he doesn't talk about anything he has not done. So the perspective that you get saying that he creates the drama, he's just spitting facts. Like everything he talks about is things that he has encountered. Like there are things I could talk about now because social media has made it so apparent and it's brought it to the forefront. But 20 years ago, if I told you some shit about, you know, female mentality like people would think that i was making shit up but because now it's it's out there and now you can see it you can pull up a, a tiktok or see a clip on youtube be like damn you got females doing that shit like yeah they've been doing this shit so he's telling you from his perspective because he's been a world champion he's party all around the world mm -hmm. and when you have when you're in that zone you're in that atmosphere you see things from a whole different perspective yeah, so you got the average man level when he's superstar sex. You know, no, he wasn't a rapper or any of that, but he was he was making that kind of money. So he was making the money where he got to meet those kind of women, the kind of women that would do trifling, low down stuff. So he's gotten all this experience from that superstar status level. And now he's he's sharing it with common individuals. And it sounds crazy. It sounds like he's creating drama, but really, mm -hmm. he's just spitting 100 percent facts. Well, I have a good question, and it'll come up right after this video. You say a lot of stuff about women, like that they're your property. That's not what I said. I was talking about an OnlyFans company when that was question was asked. But I said that if a woman is going out with a man, she belongs to that man. That's his woman. So if she wants to do OnlyFans. She owes him some money because she's his. Well, that's crazy. That one's crazy. If you, so you think that a man going out with a girl, that that's just your property? That one was nuts. I'm, I'm nuts now. Good. If a guy and a girl is dating and a girl does OnlyFans, she owes him a cut? She is his girl. But what does that have to do with anything? Because she's his. So that is you saying that women are y your property. It's not about being property. It's about the fact that she belongs to him. And the intimate parts of her body belong to him because they're in a relationship. And if she wants to sell those, he has a stake in those intimate parts of her body. So it's reverse. A uh, male porn star owes the woman. I don't know, because I think the women belong to the man. I think the woman. Yeah, that's inherently where you get called sexist for. All right. So, Mr. OP, do you think women are a man's property when they're in a relationship? I think there's a certain level of respect. So it, it all depends on what she in the sex uh industry before they got together or did they get she get into the sex industry afterwards uh i've been in situations where i dated a girl who became a sex worker and then i've you know been in a situation where i met a girl and she was a sex worker now the girls that were sex workers i got paid the girls that became sex workers afterwards i left so that's just from my perspective now, why is that? What's the difference between the two? Because that was already their lifestyle. And mm -hmm. so when someone is transforming their lifestyle while you're with them, then you have the choice to be like, look, do I want to be with this person when they create this whole new life uh, avenue for themselves? And then the other one was this was already their life when you met them. So it's accepted or not accepted. The same thing, accepted or not accepted. Mm -hmm. So... so are you entitled to the money though? Is she your property? I feel like that's a conversation. Each conversation is different. Uh, I wouldn't say that you're 100% entitled to it, but mm -hmm. if you're going into a partnership and a relationship in my, in my, you know, from my perspective, a part, a partnership is the same romantic or business, same shit. You run it like a business. So if you're getting into the sex industry and you have a partner, I mean, if you want your partner to be loyal and down with you, treat them, treat them like a partner in all aspects of your life. Well, I kind of agree because in both of those, you get fucked in the end. All right. So Big Black, what's your perspective? Do you think that a woman, a man or a woman is a man's property in a relationship? No. Like, like where, where would the ownership be? Like, why would there be ownership? The whole point of 
non-monogamy is for that sense of freedom for to be able to you know do you in an ethical way okay i'm going to interject right here okay here we go so when i'm talking about uh from my experience with a sex worker right that whole non-monogamous yes that works for a lot of people free sex all that stuff but when you're talking about someone who is doing the sex act just for the money a lot of those individuals they don't really want a non-monogamous uh, relationship. They want a monogamous relationship, and the people that they're having sex with is strictly for the money. It's a different. It's a different and understanding going on there. Because because they don't they don't want the other person that that's not getting paid, uh, you know, to have sex with anyone. They don't want them out having sex with other people. They want them to have sex just with them. And then the people that they're having sex with, it's just for the money. So I'm, from that and, aspect, they, they're, they're like, oh, there's a partnership. And, 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 and that's why I got paid. I, I do believe, I, I believe that partnership aspect. In terms of the the label of ownership, no. But but I do understand that, that aspect of in a monogamous relationship, you know, if your partner wants to go and do sex work, then there, there, there still needs to be communication. Now, everybody's different. So, you know, everybody's going to handle it a little differently. But yeah. And re respect was never the, the topic. Just it, a it little was, bit. <laughs> just a little bit. It was, it was just about uh, the idea of ownership. And so from, I'm, I'm speaking from experience, that individual thought they had ownership over me versus the same thing as, they expected me to have ownership over them. Like, like I said, there's different conversations for different people. Mm -hmm. So I, it's not a blanket uh, statement for every person in the situation. Okay. Okay. But from my perspective, this is what I'm giving. Okay. Yeah. I, I respect that. And shout out to Swism.com for all the merchandise sponsored by the Hyped Podcast on Hype News Media. All right. so